So go ahead. <laughs> oh. Well, let's not. I don't want you talking over me first. Let's start right there. Okay. Please. And I, I, and I appreciate you coming into my house and giving it. Hold on. You can handle no, it. Hold, 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 hold on. It. Hold on. Let me say this, though. I said. Think away. Here. Oh, no, hold on. I appreciate you coming into my house and giving me rules about what I ought to do. So make your but point. I'm asking a polite favor. Okay. <laughs> good. Uh, it doesn't sound polite initially, though. Thank you so much. Okay. So go ahead. If you can, if you can handle it, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> um, I can handle it. Go ahead. The affluent business as usual is a problem. You said what? That's what this is. We're in white business affluent as usual. Mm -hmm. What do we want? How do we maintain our footing? Mm -hmm. I'm talking a black middle class and professional business class population staying in this climate when they pick one. Like you bringing up the Brian guy, mm -hmm. the one. I mean, you know, they're But remember I said Brian as awesome an analogy. I didn't say guy. one. We're going to be so tired of war out. If we won't be able to continue to function as a business engineering group or a business architect group or a business land developer group because they're kicking away at us so tough. It's only 18% of the black professional population downtown doing business still in an 80% African American city in Detroit. There is a problem. We're having battle parity problems. And nobody wants to even try to deal with it and say, oh, we got a couple of black people. Look, there's Joe and there's Shaniqua over there. What does she all want? I mean, this thing has gotten so out of control that we find ourselves spending a lot of time talking about the fact that the numbers are a problem. There is a disparate number of contracts being let. Where is the black chamber guy? What happened to him? Did he get burned out? Oh, yeah, that's right. He turned into going after the young up and coming now. Because he knows that our generation of this population, we're being burned out by this racism game. And they got it. They know what it is now. They know how to do it. It's economic repression. And they're working it. And they can't. we can't do anything about it because they let the white guy take over the city's uh, election commission and all of his people. And they are took over the city. And now they're running everything, building everything, and they're doing everything. And we're standing around saying, oh, my God, if we're not white, black, we don't get in the thick. Uh -huh. And Sam is breaking it down every time you say something. He's going right to the point about the whole clique, the Machiavellians, the, the mob, you know, the corporate entities, and how they're circulating around amongst each other, past okay. the $2 million contract. I think I love you. I love you. $300,000 yeah. grant okay. right away after one year of operation. I mean, what do we do? Right. We're black people with, with, with a little bit of, of, of hood so That's about all we got. What, what else? Okay. All right. What else? Thank you so you much. Tell me. Uh, okay, okay. We'll tell you. Uh, shortly, but I think you missed the analysis a little bit. Uh, uh, I gave Brian Barnhill as an example, also as an analogy. Brian Barnhill could be your cousin Adelia out there that wants to be involved but feels sidelined. Brian Barnhill could be uh, someone's son out there uh, that wants to be involved but feels sidelined. Brian Barnhill could be someone else's uh, daughter out there that wants to be involved but feels sidelined. Let's take another call here. Uh, let's go to uh, Reggie. Reggie and John and Pam, and then we'll come back to the panel. Reggie, uh, question of Pam. Hey, uh, comment. Uh, hello, Bankale, and to all your guests. You know, when we talk about Brian Barnhill and Duggan's administration, you know, there seems to be a, pat a pattern that I've observed. Uh, you take, for example, what happened to Barnhill. He was uh, almost made invisible. You look at Roger Miller, the situation with him. Uh, you look at Aaron Affaro, the situation with him. And what has happened is uh, it, it's clear that Mike Duggan, he used black people. And then once he thinks that he's got enough information out of them, then he uh, gets rid of them. Okay? Now, when we look at uh, this uh, Boston, the Harvard speech, it was clearly a promotion to make a white carpet bag mayor who was disconnected from the people appear successful. How is it that Duggan, he can go to Harvard to speak, but can't speak to the citizens of Detroit, which he is the mayor of, he can't speak on concentrated poverty or crime. From a strategy perspective, hell, he did, basically, he did the same thing at DMC. He was a fix it guy, and uh, he was supposed to uh, kept the hospital from going bankrupt or whatever. What did he do? Hell. If I sold a hospital, I could solve the problem too. So 
this is just like I say, the bottom line here is that uh, this, this speech up at Harvard, it was to make the white carpet bag mayor appear highly successful. And that's mm. what this whole thing is about. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, let's move to the governor's race, though. Uh, the race for governor. Uh, poverty in the 2018 governor's race. Anybody want to take this? Right. See, once, once, if I wanted to, be, the governor's <clears throat> race is important, but also in terms of the action. I just want to just go back to one point. The thing that we can do as African Americans, remember, I keep saying it again, African Americans, 80% of the population here, the 70% of them voted for Duggan. Be very clear, guys. Be very clear to 70% or 20%. That's right. Right. Okay. Right. But so, right. so my point is that, well, yes, let's not say that all of a sudden he showed up. He didn't come from the sky. He came from a polling booth. And right. we put him in office. So the conversation is should be, what, who do we put in office? Do they have to look like us? No, not necessarily. But they have to right. have our goals and, and objectives. And we'll have plenty of time here when yes. we get to the, uh, right. what the next mayor sure. and all of that stuff. Right. But 2018 yeah. and the Demo uh, candidates running for governor. Anybody on the, on, among that list talking about poverty? Uh, Regina Sam. You know, I've heard all of the gubernatorial candidates speak. Mm -hmm. And calling out poverty in and of itself is a part of platforms, but I've heard people talk about issues that impact people. And I think it, linking our total conversation back together, housing is a big one on that. I mean, Sam, Sam talked about people not being able to move. People are still recovering from the recession, losing homes, rents are going up. Those are the kinds, so they may not carve out, say, the word poverty, right. but they need to talk about the issues that make up poverty, that, that hold people back, so that do make you think, it. Do you think Gretchen, Cherie, uh, Abdul, and Bill Cobbs, and uh, Bill Schuette, Brian?